Good morning, church. The prophecy in this series, Old Testament Expectations of Messiah, that we are looking at today is preceded by Elijah from Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. These verses say, See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. These two verses of exhortation from Malachi, whose name means my messenger, end our Old Testament. There is then a gap of some 400 years when God is seemingly silent with nothing else to say. Although we were reminded recently that when God is silent, then it is because he is listening. God may be silent, but he is never inactive. Verse 5 talks about the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which refers to when the Lord will return in judgment, his second coming. But, as is so often the case with prophecy, there are layers of meaning. And this is the last of some 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that are accepted to refer to the Lord's first coming, the coming of Messiah. After that long 400 year gap, the next recorded event in history at the beginning of the New Testament is found in Luke's Gospel with the account of the birth of John the Baptist. Luke recounts the angel's announcement to Zachariah. Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You are to give him the name John, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In quoting from Malachi 4 verse 6, the angel gives the first indication that this prophecy is about to be fulfilled. Luke goes on to tell us that after Mary had received the news of her pregnancy from the angel Gabriel, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was now advanced in her own pregnancy and that when Mary greeted Elizabeth, the baby John leapt in Elizabeth's womb for joy, confirming the promised imminent arrival of Messiah, even from within the womb. The prophecy, prophecy in Malachi 4 verse 5 was often discussed and debated by the Jewish rabbis, who asked, Who is the Elijah whom the Lord will send? Would Elijah come himself? After all, there was no record of his death. He had literally been taken up into heaven in a whirlwind. Or did the Elijah of Malachi's prophecy refer to someone else, to John the Baptist? The idea that John the Baptist was the Elijah who was to come gained in strength as John's ministry progressed especially as other Old Testament prophecies refer to the fact that Messiah's coming would be preceded by a messenger. And these prophecies, namely Isaiah 40 verse 3 and Malachi 3 verse 1, would seem to describe John the Baptist. Indeed, Mark begins his gospel with John the Baptist preparing the way for Messiah and by quoting Isaiah 40 verse 3, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And John's Gospel also begins by introducing John as the one sent from God to witness to the light, the coming Messiah. However, just a few verses later in John chapter 1 verses 19 to 21 we read, when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask John the Baptist, Who are you? Are you Elijah? He confessed freely, I am not. Later, in chapter 11 of Matthew, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. Did you go out into the desert to see a prophet? This is the one about whom it is written, 
I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Later in Matthew chapter 17, the disciples questioned Jesus. The disciples asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come and they did not recognise him. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. So Jesus himself tells us quite clearly that John the Baptist was not Elijah, but that John had come in the spirit of Elijah as a messenger to prepare the way for Messiah, thus fulfilling Malachi's prophecy. The prophecy in Malachi of the arrival of Messiah being preceded by Elijah is therefore the last to be given and the first to be fulfilled although we can clearly expect a further fulfilment of it yet to come. Thank you.